Hi, welcome to Helena's Kitchen. On today's show we're going to work with fish, which is something that many people ask me about because they say, how do I cook it? What would I do with it? Our first step for our fish gratin today is going to be to make the mashed potatoes. A little bit salt in the water. The water is just covering the potatoes. You don't need extremely much water. It's just because we're putting on a lid, so it's going to be steaming inside too. So just up to the top. While we're boiling our potatoes, we're going to prepare some other ingredients, and the fish will be a good one to work on right now. When you buy cod and you buy them in fillets like this, uh, there's normally left some bones in there, but cod is very easy to bone out because what you do is that you feel where the bone is and they go like in a line. So you just take your knife from where you feel them, go along the bones on both sides and cut out the strip. And there we go. There we have all the bones in the piece of fish. And a little piece of fish, and in here is nothing. So, what I'm going to do now to prepare this for the actual grot, and I'm just going to cut it into stripes, like this size. And I'm going to do that with all three fillets that I have in here. These are beautiful. Um, also from the farmer's market, I found um, spring shallots and uh, they are very mild in the flavor, perfect to use for the fish. So um, I'm going to cut them down and uh, then we have some uh, red bell pepper, uh, we have garlic, lemon and ginger. You want to try to use as much as possible of course, but not this stuff. So I'm just preparing these for right now and then they're going to be used as topping for our gratin in the end. Red bell peppers are really nice. Many people don't like to eat bell peppers, but when you tell them that it's red bell peppers, then it's very popular. Next we're going to do the ginger. And the ginger, I'm just going to cut off the peel a little bit. And the garlics, I'm gonna crush them. Peel them off. And then we're just gonna cut them down in small pieces just like we did with the ginger. And uh, if you want to, you can also use a grater if that's easier for you. What we cannot forget right now is that we need to turn on our oven and I'm turning the oven to about 450 degrees. So now we're going to make our sauce and I'm going to heat up the pan and add a little bit of oil and in this oil I already before the pan gets too hot I'm going to drop the shallots that we the spring shallots. So I'm going to add the um, ginger and the garlic and I'm continuing on low heat I want to bring out flavors so I'm going to heat it up so it gets, gets cooked a little bit even though it's on low heat so it smells really good over here and um, so in here I have the shallots, the spring shallots, I have the um, ginger and the garlic and now I'm going to add some butter. I'm adding two tablespoons of butter. We're going to add more liquid into here too but before we do that we want to add the flour in so it gets mixed in. So the amount of flour I put in here was equal with the butter so it was two tablespoons of each. Now I'm going to pour milk in. And that was uh, two cups. You can also press it over your hand and catch the seeds that way. 
So I'm putting a whole lemon in. So I'm going to add some spices. This is white pepper. And I'm adding about uh, one, one and a half teaspoon fresh ground white pepper. And about three teaspoons of salt. So it's time to make our mashed potatoes. So we have our boiled potatoes and I'm going to put them back in the hot pot so we keep them warm. And uh, while doing this I'm also going to add the butter into the mix. So now we're going to add some milk and spices into this mashed potatoes. This is about half a cup of milk. I'm going to add some of my favorite spice, white pepper again. About uh, half a teaspoon this time, or actually maybe one teaspoon is good. So this wasabi cream you can find in, in most regular stores. There is also powder you can buy, but this cream is really nice and easy to use. So I totally I added about uh, one tablespoon of wasabi cream. And we need to, some salt too, of course. And I would say about two teaspoons of salt. So now we're going to assemble our gratin. And first I'm going to spray the bowl. Then we're going to add our mashed potatoes. Our yummy wasabi spicy mashed potatoes top of this we're going to add the fish. The one thing that is really important that we haven't done yet is that we also of course have to season our fish. So we're putting salt, about one and a half teaspoon for this amount, a little bit of white pepper and then you toss it around. So I'm working the potato up a little bit along the sides. there. We're gonna pour the sauce. And if you get a little bit extra you can always save it for later. You don't want to overdo it. You can just top it off when serving it. And then on top I'm gonna sprinkle the red bell pepper. Now we're popping this one in the oven. About 40 to 50 minutes have now passed and our gratin should be ready to be uh, taken out of the oven. So let's see. Take a spoon or a fork, stick it in here, put, put up, take up a piece of the fish and just see so it's cooked. And how you can see that is just to flake it apart and see so it's white and no shiny pieces inside. But after about 40 to 50 minutes it should be properly cooked. And then you can just smooth it over like that afterwards, so you won't see that anyone has been in there. As you can see, our gratin is bubbling in there, and uh, it's not ready to be cut into yet. We want to let it sit for a little bit, and then serve it up. So now we're going to plate up. And this is a little bit of a messy dish, so it's not going to be a perfect, beautiful plating. So to finish up our plate, um, I'm going to add just a little bit of romaine, or you can use any green salad that you like. We're going to take a little bit of lemon juice over our salad, put one lemon wedge on the plate, put a little bit of salt, and a little bit of black pepper on top. And voila, there we go. There is our fish gratin to serve. And of course, the most important part of it all, you have to see how it tastes. And that's my favorite part, especially after a long, hard day in the kitchen.
and that is very tasty. A little tangy, a little spicy, and the fish is beautiful. Very fresh, right from the ocean. Good, chef's good.